Welcome to Naughty Notes. We're going to start by reviewing a definition from a few chapters back. Remember the perpendicular bisector? It was our very first classical construction. That is a construction that requires only a straight edge and a compass. Well, let's first fill in the blanks. I left you some blanks here. A perpendicular bisector is a line that not a segment, remember it's a line that divides a segment, write it down with me, into two congruent segments and forms right angles with that segment. Now, the point of concurrency, heavens to Murgatroyd, concurrency, well, that means where all things come together. In this case, three lines are going to come together at a single point. That point of concurrency of the perpendicular bisectors is known as the, ready for this? This is new, you gotta know it. Circumcenter. Think about earlier explorers circumnavigating the globe. Now, that may help you with that. So um, let's make some room, get that definition down, and um, we're going to start swinging the compass. I'm going to need some room right there. So each perpendicular bisector, we're going to gap the compass. You're going to put the needle on A, you're going to gap it to C just like you've done before. Not new, nothing new here. And I want you to give it a good swing like that. Then you reverse the compass, put the needle on C, and you're going to gap it back to A. And this is old hat by now. Sorry, that one's kind of going off the screen there. We line up our straight edge with our two points of intersection. And um, there you go. That's our line. That's a perpendicular bisector. Now, I'm going to now perform the same construction over here. Needle on A, gap it to B. I swing the arc. How far do I swing it? Well, far enough where it, it's going to go through the expected intersection. I'm going to Gap my compass the other way now. B gapped to A. I give it a swing, and look, you've got those two intersections right there. Do you see them? One there, one there. Line up your straight edge, and um, with those spots right there. Now, maybe I'll clean this up a little bit. I'll get rid of some of the uh, those tracer marks. That might be a little bit cleaner. And um, let's now take our straight, or well, let's take our compass. Really, some constructions, I'll tell you just to do two. I like to do all three, um, all three perpendicular uh, bisectors, because, well, in theory, if it's perfect, you only need to do two, but you do all three, you know, just to account for mechanical error. Maybe you can average out the error. So I'm going to put the needle on B, swing it through C. Then I'm going to put the needle on C, and I'm going to swing it through B. Oops. See, now that was a mistake. I didn't swing this one far enough. Bad teacher. Bad teacher. Because then you're going to line up your straight edge on those two intersections. Right there, right there. And there you go. That's perpendicular bisector. So again, I'll clean up the traces a little bit and say, this is a point. That's the point of concurrency. That's where all three of these perpendicular bisectors meet. That's a magic point. And now you're going to take your compass and gap it to any one. I'm going to gap it to C any one of the three vertices and 
and take a tour around because the circumcenter is the center of the circle that contains the three vertices. And that's your final circle. So make that one stand out um, before you turn this in. Maybe you, you use a colored pencil or something. Make that one bold. And you'll say, aha, that is what it's all about. Or you could say that compass is circumnavigating the triangle. But, uh, or maybe you like the, the book, The Little Prince. You've got circles on the outside. <laughs> Next section we'll do circles on the inside. But right now, we have a circumcenter. Okay. Well, that's one example. And that triangle was an acute triangle. Kind of a random. Um, I made it acute and I um, thought we'd do two more examples on this paper. So, flip your, well, it's all in one sheet for you. Move down to the next triangle. Ah, EFD. And that special kind of triangle. It looks to be a right triangle. So let's go through this one and see how she works out. I'm going to gap it this way. And again, from D to F. And then I'll reverse the compass. I'll gap it from F back to D. And you can see the two points right there, the two intersections, line up your straight edge. That is a perpendicular bisector. It's a perpendicular bisector of FD. So now I'm going to construct the perpendicular bisector of FE. Give it a swing. Oh, I hope I don't go off the screen on this one. I need more screen. Flip the compass around. Put the needle on the E, gap it back to F. And you've got an intersection there, an intersection there. I see two intersections, right there and right there. Line up your straight edge, and there you go. One more. Again, we could do two if they were perfect, but we're going to do all three perpendicular bisectors. And this time, we're going to take D, or DE. I'm going to gap it here. You're getting lost with all... Okay, I am too. Let's do this. Let's clean it up a little bit. And that's a big swing. So, and that's a big side there. And now... Put the needle on E, gap it back to D. I'm going to generate an intersection up there and one down here. And there is my third perpendicular bisector. Notice something funny there? I think you have, cleaning up the drawing, something interesting. And, um, and this will actually be a proof later on. Um, if it wasn't the COVID year, we would get to that. And uh, put the needle right there and trace our circle. This is a unique drawing. I have a right triangle. The circumcenter of the right triangle is going to work out as it does here to be the midpoint of the hypotenuse. We're going to explore that in other theorems later on, for example, in the chapter on circles. But um, I think that's a pretty neat thing to know. So look at that. DE is a diameter. The hypotenuse of DEF is DE, and DE is a diameter of that circle. Wow. Pretty cool. Okay, one more. Ready? Oh, of course you are. One more. Ah, well, we've got to do something a little different. Uh, so far, we've had acute, right, and how could we not have an obtuse? 
Let's go obtuse. J is obtuse. Let's see what happens here. We're going to do all three again. I'm going to gap from H to J. Give it a nice swing. And then I'm going to gap from J back to H. Line up your straight edge, and there you go. The perpendicular bisector of HJ. So my compass swings are there. I'll clean up the drawing a little bit. And let's move on to the next perpendicular bisector. Let's construct JK. From J passing through K. Give it a good swing. You know, I'm going back and forth, but really, this should be one smooth swing. So maybe, a, oh, once you get it capped, you should be able to get a nice smooth swing like that. Nice. So the two swings intersect there, and there's my second perpendicular bisector. How about the third one? This is a big one from H to K. I mean, look at that. It's opposite the obtuse angle, so it must be, well, it must be the longest side. Oh, we haven't had those inequalities yet. My bad, as you say. So, sorry, this one kind of went off the page, but it won't go off your paper. I made it, I designed your paper so everything will fit. All your compass swings will fit, and it will be much fun. And there you go. So the three of them meet this time, not on the inside or on the hypotenuse. The circumcenter is here. It's on, it's outside of the triangle. So it's right there. Now that's kind of neat. And let's trace this up, see if it works. Well, of course it works. In our three examples, we had a cute, we had a right triangle, and now we have an obtuse triangle. And you can see the difference in all three constructions. But in every case, it's the same. Every case, the perpendicular bisectors will meet at a single point. That point is the circumcenter. The circumcenter is inside the triangle. If it's acute, it's on the triangle if it's right, and it's outside the triangle, in this case of the obtuse.